If you've set yourself up with a $1,000 budget to put together a new streaming PC that will be able to play your games at decent settings without dropping half your frames in OBS, I'm gonna tell you what I believe is currently your best option right now, as well as talk through an alternative build in case you might wanna stay as far away as possible from Intel right now. My name is Devin, welcome to the Pixel Pub. Pull up a stool and let's get started. All right, cheers everybody. This one is going out to everybody here that this is the very first video from the Pixel Pub that they are watching. I uh, appreciate you all being here and uh, hope this isn't the last one. Cheers to you. All right, so when it comes to streaming and content creation, I've always been a fan of Intel and Nvidia. Yes, AMD products have more power for gaming for your buck, and I promise we'll talk about a full AMD build in just a second, but for video editing, streaming, other productivity aspects, Intel and Nvidia have just been the leaders. For sure, that gap is shrinking pretty quickly at the moment, but, but that gap is still there. So for this build, the CPU that I've gone with is the i7-12700KF. At just $210 right now, this CPU has 12 cores and should be more than enough to stream and game and keep you happy without being susceptible to all the recent issues and drama that Intel has been creating. Paired with the RTX 3070 for $452, this combo is the best way to get brand new equipment while still getting the performance that you want. Now a quick aside here, if you are comfortable looking at the used market, I would definitely recommend doing that right now for GPUs. The 3000 series are getting extremely hard to find new, so they're really overpriced because of that. The 4000 series are just still overpriced in general, and the 5000 series will be dropping later this year. So unless you want to wait for something like that, I suggest grabbing a used 3080 or even a 4070 if you can find it for basically the same price as a brand new 3070. For the motherboard, I've selected the ASRock Z690 Phantom Gaming 4 motherboard. This is a DDR4 motherboard, but I wanted to go that route because this is going to give you the best performance for the buck right now. If you want to talk about upgradability, that just isn't the name of the game right now. As long as you're talking about Intel, I wouldn't recommend upgrading to the 13th or 14th generation anyways. And with the new generation coming out, it's gonna be a completely different socket anyways. So we might as well go something that is the cheapest and best right now so that you can have the best performance right now and going into the immediate future. If you want upgradability, hang on for that AMD build that's coming up next. Now I put the rest of the build up here on the screen. There are, are a, a lot of really great air coolers right now for right in that 18 to 25 dollars right now. So grab whichever one you like the looks of the best. This build I went with the ID Cooling SE214 XT. It's an ARGB uh, cooler and it's going to definitely get the job done. Nothing fancy for the RAM. We went with the Silicon Power X Power Turbine, 32 gigabytes of DDR4, 32 megahertz RAM. Again, not the newest, but we are going for some of the best performance for the dollar right now. And, in, and instead of spending that money on RAM, we went with spending a little bit more money on the GPU and the CPU to get that power that you want. We've got a one terabyte team group M.2 drive. Honestly, if you are doing any sort of content creation, you're doing any sort of video work, I highly recommend at least a terabyte of storage. You're gonna regret it if you don't. And at $50 right now for a terabyte, it's not the best price it's been at, but it's not the worst. I picked out the MSI Mag A650, 650 watt, 80 plus bronze ATX power supply. This should be more than enough to run this rig. And again, right now we're going for price to performance at $49.99. It's hard to beat this price on a power supply. And to wrap this all up, we've got the Montec X3 Mesh ATX Mid-Tower Case. There's a lot of cases that are around this $40 to $70 range. Again, at this point, I would really, really focus in buying the brand, the looks, the aesthetic that you like. I personally am kind of a fan of these Montec cases. I've built in a few, and they've all been pretty darn solid so far. 
So for a total of $1,003, this machine should be pretty capable to get you some pretty high for FPS, especially at 1080p while streaming to your platform of choice. But if you are looking to join Team Red, this is the moment you've been waiting for. After the unfortunate things that have been coming out of the cesspool that we call Intel lately, I completely understand. The thing to keep in mind here is that a lot of these parts in both of these builds are completely interchangeable. Either GPU will work with either CPU, the cases, the CPU cooler, the fans, the motherboard, get the hardware that you like, the, the hardware that is aesthetically pleasing to you, and the hardware that makes sure it fits with the other parts that you're going for. Use something like PC Part Picker for that. So what I wanted to show off here in this full AMD build is actually a DDR5 build, just so that you can see that it is also possible to go that route if you want to. And really right now, the AMD route, I think that is probably a better choice. The upgradability is going to be there for you. But if you want to keep this build a little bit on the cheaper side, you can also opt for the DDR4 route to cut about 100 bucks off the final build price. So this build starts out with the Ryzen 7 7700X which is pretty comparable to the 12700KF in terms of speeds, but it is only an eight core processor. Also, it is a bit more expensive at that 287 mark, but it does make up for that by being newer as well as on that AM5 platform. The upgradability is in your favor on this build. We're gonna be adding in the XFX Speedster RX 6700 XT to this full AMD build. Again, very comparable power to the previous build, but the nice thing about this AMD card is it boasts 12 gigabytes of VRAM over the eight gigabytes offered by the 3070. Again, for much less money. Another clean option for a GPU would be the Intel Arc A770. I actually did a full build video on that card as well if you wanna check that one out. So for the motherboard on this build, we went with the MSI Pro B650S. This has Wi-Fi, it is an ATX motherboard, as well as on the DDR5 and AM5 platforms. Highly upgradable, yes, we love to see it. For the CPU cooler, again, just about any air cooler will work at right around that $18, the Thermalrite Assassin X120 Refined SE Edition. Um, this is going to be the same price as that ID cooling cooler, just a different brand, different model, just to, just to show you a little bit about what is out there. For this build, we've got 32 gigabytes of the Team Group Elite RAM, um, DDR5, 4,800 megahertz RAM, clocking in at just about $76, about $25 over the DDR4 RAM. And then we've also got the Silicon Power A61 terabyte M.2 drive. Here, we're running exactly the same thing. I ended up putting in the same MSI MAG A650BN 650 watt power supply. It's gonna be the best bang for your buck right now. Um, it's going to be enough to power this PC and uh, it's hard to turn down that $49.99 price tag. <laughs> to put this whole PC together, I decided to put this one in the DIY PC Rainbow Flash F4, coming in right at $49.97. DIY PC has been uh, kind of taking influencers by storm right now. They've got some really, really nice looking cases for some really, really great prices. Definitely recommend checking them out and I can't wait to officially build in one. All right, two builds for the price of one. That at least deserves a like and a subscribe, right? Or at least another drink. Either way, if you're still looking for more options for CPU and GPU combos that will be absolutely perfect for whether you're an esports player, a just chatting streamer, or you want to play all the newest AAA games, make sure you check out this video over here and I'll see you over there.